Uh, the original run of Dune Books, Rue Clanky, is six. And it ended on kind of a cliffhanger. And then many years later, I think this was the late 90s, his son, along with uh, Brian Herbert, along with, oh God, what was the guy's name? Anderson? Um, can't remember, but they did like a prequel trilogy set immediately before the original Dune books, which were okay. They weren't horrible. They also did another prequel trilogy, which was way before, set during the time of the Butlerian Jihad, which was not good. It wasn't particularly good at all. It had some okay moments, and they were obviously going heavily off Frank Herbert's own copious amounts of notes that he'd made about this world. Uh, but yeah, they weren't particularly good. And then after that, they did a sequel trilogy, which aimed to... Res or was it even a trilogy? I can't remember. Was it like two books? It basically aim aim um, aimed to resolve the cliffhanger that was left at the end of the original June six books. Not Poole Anderson. Brian Anderson? Oh, I should know this. I've got them on my shelf. I'm actually going to look this up real quick. Um, is it Kevin? Kevin J. Anderson? No, that's not right. Something Anderson, I'm sure of it. Kevin? No, it was Kevin J. Anderson. Oh, I was right. Okay. So yeah, Preludes of, of, to Doom was the kind of immediately before set one, which was fine. That was that, that trilogy. And then Legends of Doom was the one that was set way back when, which was supposed to explain the great rivalry that uh, happened between the Harkonnen and the Atreides, and it kind of, it, it kind of sucked. Uh, Hunters of Dune and Sandworms of Dune. So it was a pair of books which was supposed to follow on from Chapter House Dune, which was the original sixth novel. And apparently there's been another four since then that I didn't even know about. Heroes of Dune, which take place between the first five novels of Frank Herbert's original series, but only two were successfully published, and so the inter prequels ended in 2009. So they only did two of those, even though they planned four. Right, okay, so they've done a bunch of Dune stuff. He was kind of um, riding on his father's coattails a bit, shall we say. But yeah, in terms of quality, don't really compare to the original. <laughs> Pam Anderson, yes, yes, well-known sci-fi author Pam Anderson. I don't know, maybe she's a huge sci-fi fan. Could be for all I know. Sometimes surprising things come from surprising places. Oh, well, dude, that's one of Clyde's lot. Nice. 11k on an angled battleship. We'll take that. Uh, new question. Are armory coal ships cyclical or do they get turned to gold permanently? Um, it kind of varies. Like they, they shuffle ships around from time to time, so you never really know how long ships are going to be in the armory for a given resource. The uh, research point ships seem to be have been... Like, I don't think we've had any changes there especially. But things like free XP ships and coal ships are possibly subject to change. I don't know if there's been any that they've taken out and then sold for gold. Sometimes when a new one is added, they will sell it as well to begin with in some kind of package. <laughs> I think they did that with the Jean Bar, and I'm sure they've done it with others. Corazzata nemica individuata. 
Oh, I'm interested why I have a Discord server. I have one set up for the top level of my Patreon supporters. That's about it. Just as a way to easily communicate with them. Otherwise, um, people, Patreon supporters, tend to just, like, the rest of them could just PM me through Patreon. I check that fairly frequently. But I don't, I don't have, like, a community thing set up or anything. I guess. I don't know, I already have so many Discord servers on my, um, you know, thingamy list that it's kind of... I only keep track of a couple of any any given time, so then managing all of my own on top of that would be... I don't know, I'm just too lazy. <laughs> Let's just, just chalk it up to being too lazy. JB Pommern, Alaska, Azuma. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it has been done. It's not been a like, ma massively frequently done thing necessarily, but... No, it has been done. Right, Georgia, you kind of walked into that. Let's be honest. But it is going to cost the Aegir as well. That's spotted, obviously, because that guy's close enough. I don't know if that was a good trade, really. Aegir for a Georgia. Especially when we're outnumbered here. I think we're just going to get some distance going. I don't think that's Savetsky story. Is, oh, they can't survive long enough to turn around. I hope my torps aren't going to hit them. No, we went for the AG here. Now the, now the Soyuz is diving forward, so that's Your good. Is appreciated. That's not what we wanted. Let's try and hit the Udaloi. So the disadvantage of the particularly slow torpedoes is sometimes you get it's it looks fine and safe when you actually fire them and then somebody goes forwards and suddenly it's not fine or safe at all. Right, yeah, this is definitely run away, but we seem to be again winning extremely hard. Look at this team list. And basically play a, a kiting game here. My Udo is going to be kind of hard to hit, but the Benham's basically there, fairly unmolested, so yeah. Which is nice when you're in a Benham. Nobody knows that you're there, and you've got a nice lot of fat battleships to ping torpedoes downrange at. But they are kind of head on towards him, which is less than ideal, but yeah. Let's see if we can reset the Pommern as well. I'm just farming some defense flags right now, really. Okay, so they've seen the Benham. And understandably are quite interested in tackling the Benham. Yeah, I think Udaloy... I mean, SAP is just good against destroyers anyway, but doesn't Udaloy have a decent amount of armor, or am I just thinking of the Khabarovsk? Don't know. Do a little more damage. No, I stepped on the brakes. Might still clip him though. No. Oh, nice. A bit more damage. 
Oh, there goes the Oodaloy. I think we might be quite close to winning. He's popped out of his smoke. I get to farm some more damage on the Iowa, perhaps. I don't think this pommel is going to last too much longer. Oh, if the Oodle is still in the smoke, I might even get a top hit there. I guess we'll see. Kind of hilarious if I do. Right, this is not going to be high damage, but with the number of defense flags I've got, it might be at least quite a decent score. Yeah, I guess I might as well use the heal. Oh no, they've capped. We're definitely going to lose now. <laughs> yeah, the rest of our ships are looking pretty healthy, to be honest. So. Where are you, Iowa? Got my fuel smoke ready. There's the Drake. Is Sansonetti doing a Sansonetti thing? Well, that's the Udaloi. I'd like to hit the Drake, though. He's really not moving fast. Nice. 5k chunk. Oh, the room went down. We're actually losing some ships to these last four. They've got themselves holed up at this cap. But, you know, we're just waiting for our heavies to come down the map at this point. I think part of it is just practice and also, you know, sometimes if I get distracted I definitely play a bit less well. Changing latitude. Latitude? Latitude. <laughs> Was there supposed to be an E on the end of that or not? Hey, Frosty. I mean, partly it's just practice. Streaming is definitely practice. And overall, I notice I play better when I'm just playing and able to fully concentrate on just playing. The trick is playing good enough to be entertaining when you're streaming. Right, the Udaboy might well be in the Friesland smoke. First game in the Pensacola. Yeah, the guns are a huge upgrade. Huge, huge, huge upgrade. I mean, Omaha is, you know, it is what it is, and, and Pensacola is still pretty damn squishy, but suddenly you get uh, so much more hitting power.
Right, that hasn't got me. Oh, no, there we go. Spotted. A lot of smoke around right now. Okay, there's the Udloi. I mean, this is just kind of a doomed last stand at this point, really. And a chance to farm a bit more damage, I suppose. Right. I know that Oodaloy is somewhere on my flank. Oh, there he is. Just to open fire. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even the 25 mil barrel, you know, that's that's a pretty good deal at tier six. It's still squashy, but a hell of a lot less squashy than an Omaha. There's not too many things that are quite as squashy as an Omaha, apart from you know all the other tier five cruisers. Nice, and a kill. Oh man, that guy just started accelerating. Yeah, this boy is going to be hard. Right, let's use this last smoke to make a little turn. Oh, Omaha can be fun, but you just also can get deleted so very easily, all in one go. Oh, he's very low health. Burning nicely. There he goes. Well, nothing spectacular this game. They th Those last couple of ships really managed to draw this out. I think because everyone came down in dribs and drabs. And you can't often get a chance to make like truly devastating hits with this ship. With the SAP, anyway. If someone gives you broadside and you've got the uh, AP loaded, then... You can go for it. But yeah, this is one of those games when, eh, fine, we're winning and everyone gets really overconfident and suddenly we only have four ships left. Ooh. Can I? Nope, gonna take that in the nose, that's fine. Alright. Oh, it's got my last heal back, and there's the kill. Yeah, that's true. If you get a map with islands, it's gravy, but for open water fighting, you just have to trust to RNG that you're not going to get smacked around too much by battleship shells. That was actually a decent score. Not entirely sure how that damage was enough to put me at the top of the team, but on the other hand, 11 defending defender flags, so that's probably it. I did say earlier it was probably going to be decent just from the amount of defense flags I was getting. Well, that was okay. But definitely a game where the perils of overconfidence were in play.